Wow. My name's Daniel Bailey, and I have run into bronies in the mountains, but that's not what I'm here to talk about today. Um, I'm actually going to talk about how to climb a mountain without killing yourself. Um, my interest in mountain climbing began in the spring of 2003 with a series of day hikes in the Columbia Gorge and Mount Hood Wilderness. One day I was wrapping up a hike of the Eagle Creek Trail, and as I was in the parking lot, a whole bunch of cars pulled in the parking lot and out poured a whole bunch of hikers totally decked out in battle gear. They had huge backpacks, gaiters, trekking poles, drinking tubes, you name it, they had it. They looked like they were ready for anything. Um, I found out that they were the Mazamas and that to become a Mazama, you had to climb a glaciated peak. So I decided I was gonna do that because they looked like a lot of fun. It took me a few weeks to trick somebody into go and climb Mount St. Helens with me, and we didn't summit that day. Um, we got to the top and it was a little icy, um, and so I tried a couple more times, put that plan on hold while I graduated college and set off to hike the Appalachian Trail instead. Um, five months later, I came back to Portland and um, my thoughts returned to Mazamas and I looked them up, found their website via Google, and saw that they were offering a basic climbing education program, which taught me how to use the tools that I would need to climb. And uh, so back to the point, um, the, the most important part of learning to climb a mountain is to educate yourself and then to set your goals realistically. It might be something as simple as Mount Tabor or it might be something more complicated like Dog Mountain or Mount Defiance on your way to climbing stuff like Mount St. Helens and Mount Hood. Um, all of these are excellent goals, especially if you're starting from zero like I was. This is the longest slide. Anyway, once you've picked your mountain, um, it's really important to research it. There's a whole bunch of websites available that you can use to find out route information, weather, and what gear you're gonna need. I don't expect you guys to write these down, but contact me later at Green Hiker on Twitter or at Gmail, and I'll send them to you. Um, a lot of these mountains have really great trails, but if they're covered in snow, what are you gonna do? It's really important to be able to know how to read a map and use a compass especially if you plan on getting home alive. Um, so, and also check the weather. It's gonna really suck if you get out there and there's thunderstorms. If there's a forecast of bad weather for where you're planning to climb, go ahead and go somewhere else. Or maybe you should stay home that weekend and sleep in and go get brunch with some friends. Um, anyway, you need to get the right gear and that can be a little cost prohibitive at first, but it's gonna last you a long time and then take care of it and keep a gear list so you know what to bring with you. It really sucks when you show up at camp after a long day of hiking and you don't have a sleeping bag. It makes for a cold night. It's happened to me um, once. Uh, so take care of yourself when you're out there. Make sure to bring your 10 essential pieces of gear, which are listed there. I'm not gonna read them to you. Also, make sure to drink plenty of water and eat regularly while you're out there so you have energy all day. And climb with others. While it's great to experience the solitude of the great outdoors, you can leverage off of your friends. They can bounce ideas off of you. You can evaluate situation at hand. And that can help you to avoid objective hazards, such as avalanche-prone slopes, a uh, slope that's too icy to cross safely, and just deciding when it's time to pack it in and go home. Maybe you need some more education or training before you step up to the next level. And it's important to know your limits. If you are trying to climb something that you're not prepared for, you might die. Um, I've not died yet climbing a mountain. It's my goal to never end up on the news. So if you ever see me on the news, I have failed. Um, <laughs> and so really the best way to avoid accidents is to not become complacent. Complacency kills. Double check your gear, double check your friend's gear. Make sure you follow that gear, gear list um, and <laughs> Sorry. Um, so the important aspects of a climb are safety, fun, summiting, and returning home. Of those, the only one that's optional is to summit, and you will have fun. You may not realize it at the time that you're having fun. It may take you three or more weeks and several beers, but you will have fun. <laughs> so um, I took the Mazama's basic education program in 2006, and it taught me everything I needed to know. Um, for the beginning level, and since then I've taken their intermediate course as well as their leadership program, um, which has enabled me to actually teach that course, and I highly recommend it for anybody who is 
interested in learning to climb. And I initially tried climbing Mount St. Helens in 2003. My first three attempts were highly unsuccessful. I've climbed a lot of mountains since then successfully, but I finally summited Mount St. Helens last May. Folks, my name's Daniel Bailey, and thanks for your time.